I love Dungeons and Dragons. I also love my design tools. So when I tell people I run my online D&D games through Figma as if it's totally normal, I get more than a few raised eyebrows. It is those eyebrows that led me here to make this video to explain to everyone why I believe Figma is the perfect tool for a design nerd who has a passion for pen and paper style games and the designer who enjoys pushing design tools beyond the limits of what its maker intended. My name is Will Churn. I'm a freelance graphic designer, a professor of design, and most importantly, the dungeon master to dungeons and designers. So why Figma? One of the most important rules for a DM is to be comfortable. Being a DM requires juggling many tasks at once, so it's important to use tools that don't add any unnecessary complications, making a game even more challenging to run. Since I already use Figma daily, it has become a second nature as driving my car. Well, well, maybe better than driving my car these days. Figma was not intended for D&D. Sure, but that's part of the magic of it. It doesn't have a bunch of fluff. It doesn't have some overly complex interface seemingly trying to turn a session into a video game. It instead more closely resembles what it feels like to roll out my Chessex playmat, draw a mask with my dry erase marker, and well, I feel like I'm about to go on a back in my day rant. So when I talk about running D&D, there are a few items that are necessary. A dungeon that materializes as it's explored. Tokens for your players and monsters. Side note, Jai Mosqueda, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, made these class icons and you can download them by clicking the link in the video description below. And lastly, the DM needs to be able to effortlessly mark up the map to show environmental changes. Okay, 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 enough with all the explanations. Let's get into how I made this. Feel free to pause the video and follow along at your own pace. And if you still have questions after watching this, please leave them in the comments below and we can try to answer them. The first step is to set up your frame, which will act as the play area. I'm gonna make my frame 4096 pixels by 2048 pixels. You'll notice I use multiples of two a lot in this video. This makes the math a bit easier and helps everything snap together as the file gets more complicated. Now for the very important grid, we're gonna establish our grid in this frame by applying an image of a two by two grid section and setting it to tile. Making sure the tiling is set to a multiple of two. In our case, we're gonna use 128. This means every square is 64 pixels wide. So our medium sized tokens need to be 64 pixels wide. As for our play area, we will end up with 64 squares across and 32 squares up and down. With each square representing five feet, we will end up with 51,200 feet of in-game real estate. That's a pretty big dungeon. I had the grid tile laying around from an old Illustrator file, but you can make a gridded square in Figma and export as a JPEG and get the same effect. To start drawing our dungeon, let's begin with a group that has the same starting coordinates as our board so that our entire setup lines up with the grid. I'm gonna do this by drawing a small square in the top left corner. Next, I'm gonna make the first room. With the room and corner marker selected, I can use the Boolean function to unify them. This unify function is a crucial step so that the effects can be applied to the parent layer rather than having to apply effects to each individual room layer. Dungeon walls can be added quickly by applying a stroke. I'm gonna set the stroke to be inside. This will be very important a bit later and to a width of five pixels. Double clicking on the room moves us into the group. By holding down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, I can drag this room to quickly make a new room. This could be used as a second room, but for now, I want to use it to help make our first room a bit more unique. Let's give the room a cool tower in the corner. Notice how the stroke is outlining both shapes. That's because the stroke is applied to the parent layer and Figma sees everything inside as being unified as a single shape. By combining a rectangle and small square, we can create a room with a doorway. We'll speed this next bit up slightly, but using what we learned so far, it's easy to quickly drop in a ton of rooms. Don't forget to group and name all the rooms. It'll be a big help when playing later. To incorporate a Fog of War effect, I'm going to duplicate the map group and turn off the stroke. 
Because the original stroke was set to inside, I did say that was going to be important, it's now completely covered by this new group. And revealing the map is as simple as turning off the visibility of each room within the Fog of War group as the players enter and explore. Now that we have our dungeon, let's talk tokens. Earlier we showed the icons Jime made, a link to which is in the video description below. I took his AI file and put each icon onto a circle background. I then exported them as SVGs and imported each into Figma, where I made each token into a component. Because each token is a separate component, our players can drag in their own token and choose their own color. It also allows the DM to signify a status effect with the background. I've also made a set of generic tokens, so when I need a goblin or two, I can easily pull them into play. With everything being vector, I can also scale them for the times I need something that's just a little bit bigger, like a bear, or like a magical moose. That's the basics. With our map now finished, we can use the pen tool to draw features and embellishments, further engaging the players and creating an experience everyone can nerd out over. You can see my maps in action by going to our Dungeons & Designers playlist and watching our most recent campaign, Lathander's Ring, a future fantasy 5e game. We stream live on Twitch the second and fourth Thursday of every month and release the VODs on YouTube. The link is in the video description below. Oh hey, here's a little bonus tip. You can make a d20 by making a 20 layered group, each layer with its own number. You can roll the die by installing the sorter plugin from Tom Lowry and random sorting the children. There's a link to grab sorter in the description. Thanks for watching. Down in the comments below, let us know if you would like to see how we integrate Figma into OBS for our live streams, or maybe even other topics surrounding how a bunch of design nerds play D&D. See you later.